Right, let's do this. Hi everyone, back again with the desktop robot arm and head build. It's been a little while since the last video. I've been busy in work, but I have found a little bit of time to, to come and progress with this project. The most notable addition to the project, you'll remember from a couple of videos ago, I uh, I was quite pleased with the with the hand with the tact switches for detecting when the robot had touched something. Um, but I thought I could go a step further with this, and I've designed and printed a new, a new attachment for the end of the robot arm in the form of a sonar sensor. Uh, I'll show you the 3D printing process here, a little uh, time lapse of that. But you can see, if I turn the camera and get it to focus, um, it's an additional micro servo on the end of the arm with the sonar sensor mounted on it. This has the same functionality as the hand in that if this is pointed down towards the, the ground it will still stop the robot colliding with anything. But it has the ad added benefit of being able to take distance measurements as the, as the robot arm moves around. Uh, I've got some plans in mind for this. Um, it can detect movement. So if it's sat still, waiting, waiting to detect motion, uh, the robot can react when it sees sees a change. Someone walk by, hand in front, something like that. But it, it can also sit plotting out its its surroundings um, while nothing else is happening. Uh, and the idea is I can build up a some sort of three D model of the of the robot's environment. To that end, I've also been working on. A model of the robot arm itself, um, along with some updates to the, the user interface, which I can show here. So, as well as um, changing some of the colours, making it look a bit nicer, I've also added some uh, additional functionality. The main one you'll notice is the plot of the robot arm. So I've done quite a lot of uh, work modelling the robot arm uh, using the Denavit Hartenberg parameters for each of the each of the joints, and doing some of the matrix maths to work out the x y z coordinates of each joint, which then means I can I can model these. Uh, I spent a long time figuring out how I could actually plot this data to the screen before deciding on using a a 3D map plot lib um, chart and I'm just drawing lines between the coordinates of the robot's joints at the moment. I'll show you this in action, uh, I think it's worth it working quite well. So if I turn on the robot arm, I can actually move the robot arm around using the sliders and the model will reflect but this is just taking the slider values and plotting them. If I select live data so that it's reading the servo positions from the from the robot directly and then use live data on the trend, this will actually track the movement of the robot as it moves. All except for the newly added servo on the on the end of the robot arm there. I'm going to adjust the camera so you can actually see see what's going on. There we go, got a view of the robot arm now. I can move the robot arm with the sliders and the, and the model will reflect what's actually happening. As you can see there's a bit of jitter on the on the feedback from the servos, that's why the, the arm's jumping around a bit, but generally it seems to be working quite nicely. Uh, the benefit of using this matplotlib 3D plot to draw the arm is that I've got the inbuilt functionality of being able to rotate and, 
and move the model around. And I've done a bit of calibration work on the on the arm to try and get the model to match what's happening happening in real life. There's a bit more work to do on that. You'll see on the interface as well. I've actually got this um, bar, this 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 image showing the sonar value. So if I put my hand in front of the sonar and bring it back slowly, you'll see that bar increase in size, representing the reading from the from the sonar. And if I turn the robot away, you'll see it's reading a good distance now when it's pointing pointing into open space. And as an addition, I've also added on to the plot the functionality to turn on a line showing what the sonar is reading, which if I point the sonar to the ground, you'll see the red line um, measuring the distance to the ground. And I know my model must be reasonably accurate, as this line does tend to line up with the ground. I'll send this to its home position. So if you'll remember back from a few videos ago, I had my little wish list and this was one of them, it was a, a model of the robot to show what it's doing in real time and for some offline programming because as it is now if I disable the arm I can still move the model around and I could use this to store positions um, for offline programming of the robot another interesting thing to to try out is if I put the live data back on and use live data on here and I move the robot arm around by hand the model will actually reflect what the robot's doing let's change the view there just so you can see the rotation working quite nicely So as I said I've made some good progress, I'm particularly pleased with the the new end effector if you like, or the, the new sensor on the end of the arm. The only thing it lacks at the moment is some feedback and having opened up one of these micro servos, looking at um, tapping into the internal potentiometer, it's, uh, it's a fiddly job, I'm worried that the servo wouldn't survive so there's a good chance that I'm probably going to redesign this slightly to have a potentiometer externally mounted for some position feedback so that would go something like like that so I might have to reprint these parts to encompass this but but for a minute certainly for for what I'm doing at the moment this is this is definitely good enough so as I said at the moment I've got the sonar distance uh, being plotted onto the onto the the model on the screen. It's not a great leap to imagine logging each of the x y z coordinates of the endpoint of the the sonar, and actually using that to start building up a a three D model of the robot's environment. So that might be one of the next steps, um, and I could store those those coordinates into a what would end up being a, a very big array, and plotting them as well and, and almost like a point cloud um, displayed on the on the graphic as well so that's where I am at the moment not much update on the on the head um, I'm going to do something similar uh, for a model of the head and I can even display that in the um, plot as well so I can have both of them on there and uh, and then start using some some vision uh, processing uh, in conjunction with the sonar sensor to start mapping the robot's environment and I think it'll be fun to, ha to have the robot interact 
um, using the sonar to detect to detect movement or differences in the environment, and then the head can react to to those changes. But I'll leave it at that for now. Plenty of work to do. Um, so thanks for watching, and uh, and I'll be back soon.